Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, Character Effects Chapter 5. And today we are going to talk about this two-handed setup, but before that I would like to remind you that you could create your own output materials by accessing any of the available simulation buffers. And later on I'm planning to cover this topic as well, but until that you could just check out the available example materials and play around a little bit here in the preset manager trying to figure out which <laughs> parameter does what and now um, returning uh, to this two-handed setup I would like to compare it to the setup that we have created last time by processing that pound so uh, if you have a look at this setup, you could see that uh, we have added a second simulation container for the eyes. So we have two simulation containers included in the pawn. And the one that is tracking the hands is using only two bones in the middle finger. So one simulation container for both hands. And it's quite a large container. Now, let's have a look at the other one. Well, this one is using two dedicated containers, one for each hand, and the containers are somewhat smaller compared to the guy on the right. And the other difference is that we are tracking all the digits, all the joints in the fingers. So there is more information and it is uh, matched with a smaller brush size. So let me shortly show you how it looks on the details panel. I'm selecting the character and Ninja Live component in the character. Here uh, in the brush settings you could see that it's scaled down four times so or brush is globally scaled and by selecting the live interaction group and this uh, list of bone names you could see that we have 15 bones here uh, each joint is copy pasted from the skeleton the name of the joints and you don't have to be shy ninja could handle hundreds of bones so it's a very convenient and easy way to um, selectively display fluid simulation on certain parts of the character and that is the main difference really so again, comparing these two characters. Hey matey, could you come a bit closer please? Yes, and have a look. Having more bones and smaller brush size and somewhat smaller simulation container results more details. So that's how we did it. And looking at the blueprints, there is only a small difference. We have both trace meshes located under the skeletal mesh, and this ensures that we could access uh, the sockets and bones in the skeletal mesh, and we are using this lower arm as a pivot point. Mm, shortly that's it. Thank you for your attention, and see you next time.